Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Halo in Review podcast series. This is a limited run podcast. I believe there's going to be 10 episodes. We're going to spend one episode each going through each Halo game, talking about the positives and negatives, how the game performed back in the day, what made it so good, what was cringe about each Halo game, and just kind of break down our memories. For this series, I'm joined by BTC Hostesside. Hostie, how are you today? cringe oh, i'm doing good oh we're doing cringe. i'm doing yeah doing cringe i'm happy we're finally on to halo 2 yes uh finally getting to the 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 great games that really made halo what it is today i wouldn't say halo 5 today but like you no. know what what really is the nostalgia <laughs> of halo i think was kind of solidified in halo 2 yes i'd say it started here and then went to reach Right. I'd say those were the those were the big days. I agree. I agree. So, so uh, Halo Two, also Halo Two Anniversary. The game was originally re released on uh, November nineteenth, two thousand four, on the original Xbox. Then re released May eighth, on two thousand seven, for PC. November eleventh, twenty fourteen, for the Xbox One. For uh, that was for Anniversary. Mm -hmm. And then May sixth. 2020 on steam for uh, mcc on pc and then again november 17th 2020 for xbox series x and s for that glorious update to uh make it look better right and you know we're gonna see a lot of release dates for these halo games but i i didn't realize that halo 2 launched on vista the same year as halo 3 on console yes yep i owned uh i owned halo 2 vista so it was uh an experience to I'm, say the least. I'm sure it was <laughs> well windows vista in general was so i guess you know windows vista is cringe <laughs> it's uh going into it's like has its own permanent place in the cringe compilation so. it, it does and it's kind of like the yin and the yang with windows operating systems like one is really good and yep. then the next one is refined or, I'm sorry, <laughs> then they try to add all these new features, and it's horrible. And yeah, then the next you, one's good. You go from, like, Windows Vista, then you go to the glorious Windows 7, and then you go to the cringe Windows 8, and now we have the Chad Windows 10. So. Now, does that mean Windows 11 is going to be horrible? Probably. Which is sad. I really like that UI that they showed off. Yeah. We'll see. It's uh, It's been a while since there's been a new Windows. Time, so. time will tell. Evidently, no PC on planet Earth can even run it. When you, if you run that, um, there, so there's like this tool that you can download that'll tell you if your PC can even run Windows 11. And oh in, in typical Microsoft fashion, it, it has a bug to where, um, if something on your <laughs> BIOS isn't turned on, it'll automatically say that you can't run it. And so, oh, like, uh, apparently, it's something like everyone except like the hardcore gamers that flip this on on their BIOS, it says like 99% of like all PCs cannot run Windows 11, which is that's amazing, which is false, of course, but it's hilarious. It's the most Microsoft thing ever. Yeah, it's like everything else they make for PC. That's right. Yep. Uh, so Halo 2 was de developed by Bungie mm -hmm. and uh, it had some pretty good reviews. Excellent reviews. I would say. Excellent reviews. You know, critical reception uh, was very positive. I would say overwhelmingly positive, considering some of the fun facts we're going to get into. Uh, IGN rated it a 9.8. GameSpot rated it a 9.4. They probably had problems with the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, Metacritic, 95 out of 100. I agree with all of that. Okay. I, I think this is... I think it's pretty easy to agree with what the critics say. Yeah, I would I would rate it like a ninety six out of a hundred if that was me. Like put it right in the center, but yeah, I had some very minor problems with the game. Otherwise, it was a fantastic game. I Why think we, uh... I think Halo Two is there's just something special about Halo Two where I I universally mm -hmm. love every aspect of this game to where. Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite Halo game. Uh, maybe overall as a, as a package of all features and the way you interact yeah. with the game, I, it may be my favorite in that aspect. But I really like uh, the lore. We'll get on to this eventually. Let, yeah. Let's just move on to the fun facts. Absolutely. Um, why don't you start us off with the first one? Sure. So 
apparently there were going to be a lot of more vehicle variants in Halo 2. Um, for those of you who are unaware, Halo 2 had a very infamous, um, I guess, development cycle. There was a lot of crunch. There was a lot of things that were cut from the game. Apparently, this cliffhanger ending, you're supposed to go on Earth and have some more um, battle missions on Earth. But mm -hmm. some of the things that were cut were vehicles. And there were supposed to be multiple versions of the Warthog. And uh, one of this was the Arctic variant. We saw this in the Halo 3 DLC yeah. map Avalanche. And mm -hmm. uh, they even had a prototype of an ATV. And that was resurrected in Halo 3 as the mongoose so these ideas were floating all the way back in halo 2 which i thought was quite cool yeah and i feel like a lot of times halo 3 was just a content you know it honestly is just a what they wanted for halo 2 like halo, halo 3 is just the the continuation yeah um, and they actually got to add everything they wanted to i will say Halo 2 had some incredible, uh, never-before-seen multiplayer experience. Like, you know, they added DLC. Well, not even DLC. It was like you go to the store and get a map pack. But That had never it, been done before, I don't think. Uh, not, not to my knowledge, but, like, it's Maybe. weird thinking about it now that you had to go to back to GameStop or wherever you went just to buy the new maps. Yeah. You know? And let me tell you, there was a lot of maps for Halo 2. There were. Um, There's a lot of variety, and I, I love Halo 2 mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. It was, it was and, great. Gosh, I remember getting splattered so many times on one of the maps by the <laughs> trains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the train map where they, like, drive by and you can get run over by them. <laughs> yeah. I, I do remember uh, that. Great times. But so did you know? Uh, the did you know section in the multiplayer lobbies. So like when you're waiting for a match or uh, loading up to get the match started, the did you know section was active for over five years. And it it was so old it even mentioned Halo Reach. I think that's so cool because that extends yeah. from like one era of Halo to another, kind of from the beginning mm -hmm. of Halo, of Bungie's reign at least, to yeah. the very end. And, and uh, they can... They continued that, too, for Halo 3. They added the Did You Know section, even, and uh, and they updated that over the years, which is crazy that, you know, this small little section is continuously, you know, got updates until they shut it down, basically. You and, know? and that's not something that they just were like, let's make... I don't know how often they updated this. I don't know if it was daily or weekly or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But they had to have had someone actively think and it's probably just a text document and then they just push the code to their server and it grabs it that way. So yeah. it's probably not that much effort, but nonetheless, it was effort that even when they were doing development of Halo 3, ODST, mm -hmm. and then Reach, there were still like someone saying, hey, remember this one tiny little feature that people we'll see in Halo 2 for just a few seconds. <laughs> we should go back and update this occasionally and like yeah. someone That's did crazy. it. You know, like imagine being that one guy that has to go back to Halo 2 every every so often and be like, "Okay, I got to update the did you know section." I'm, I'm you know, sure... that just shows their their carefulness to details, you know, of Bungie's bat like prime back in the day of of how much they cared. You know, yeah. going back, you don't see that anymore in games. And obviously, we don't see that in Halo Wars 2. Um, but, you know, Halo Wars 2 got dropped after four years. I would say probably actually three, three and a half. But, you know, regardless, you don't see games being small things in games being updated for over five years. Right. Um, and this is really something that, you know, they could even give into the interns and be like, you know, this is... Mm -hmm. He, here's something that'll be fun and um he i agree with you what you said earlier that no one does this anymore what you'll see like for example um assassin's creed does this where it's like origins odyssey and valhalla have pretty a pretty similar main menu system and they will just yeah. advertise like the newest game there and it's mm -hmm. not even like tips or anything it's just like uh, assassin's creed valhalla is available now like that's kind of the shortcut way 
you know, this is like actual yeah. tips and there were a lot of jokes in this and it was just <laughs> something to kind of very small, but something that would like maybe have a player be like, oh, I wonder what's new on this. Did you know section? Yeah, oh, that's that's really cool. And I would honestly love to do something like that for other games, too. Like, let's be real. Imagine going back and like changing small stuff like that and seeing a player notice that. How yeah. much like not only would the dev feel good about that, but it's going to make the player feel like the developers care about the game more. Um, but it's definitely something I would love to see the the that similar treatment for Halo Wars 2. Um, there's a lot of things I could say that Halo Wars 2 should get, but <laughs> that's yeah. a that's a completely different discussion. Um, so the next one is Halo 2 eventually connects to Halo 5 through the opening of Halo 2 Anniversary in the Hunt the Truth marketing campaign. I think... which is true, yeah. I think this is because really just of release timing. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, this is pretty much just a coincidence of timing. If, cause there, it was really rumored at this time that we were getting just Halo two anniversary for the 10 year mark of mm -hmm. Halo two in 2014. It ended up being Halo two anniversary and much more, which we come to know as master chief collection. Yeah. And but Halo 2 Anniversary was really the big selling point of that package when it first came out and Halo 5 was right I'd around say the corner. Worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And and it, it, they have that um what is it Spartan Lock uh showing up to, with Arbiter at the beginning of Halo 2 Anniversary. Yes. Mhm. Mm so I don't know. We and then it just ends up Halo 5 being <laughs> ends up being horrible, but Oh my god, yeah. That made it way worse. Uh, and then MCC was horrible, too, when it came out. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. That's very that, true. Those two releases, like, coinciding with each other really, really killed Halo for a couple of years. It's still um, dead. It is still dead, and it's probably never going to truly recover. I would, in my opinion, I would say, unless they start doing a little bit more stuff, you know? Like, more... Things like Bungie is doing, as you can see in these uh, these nice fun facts, even. Um, so, Halo 2 is actually on the list of greatest video games of all time. Deservedly so. Yeah. It is up there um, with uh, Super Mario. Uh, Halo Combat Evolved is on the list, too. That's actually in the Gaming Hall of Fame. But um, you have other games like trying to think i saw several on there when i was doing it but like you had halo 3 on there as well you had gears of war on there um really gears one gears gears one was on there um then there were some other games like uh one of the forza games was on there but i don't remember which one but anyways it's a long list on Wikipedia of the greatest games of all time. So uh, go check it out. It has some pretty great releases on there if you're ever looking for a fun game to play. Very true. But absolutely. So uh, here's a great one. Uh, I found a, a nice little article that said this. Halo 2 is credited with the birth of the video game as we know it today, a mass shared experience, and credit it with birthing modern multiplayer infrastructure and popularizing American esports. Huh. I would agree with that. I didn't even think about it that way at first, because, like, you know, you have Quake, which is, like, the original esport. Um, and then I look at this and I'm like... The game changed a lot, <laughs> you know. Gaming changed a lot when Halo Two came out because, um, you had MLG tournaments which were popularized. Like they even showed up on ESPN at some points, um, which I thought was crazy. Like uh, you had uh, Chris Puckett's top ten; <laughs> those were always good, um, and. I, I completely agree with it popularizing American esports because before, you know, it would probably be like, what, StarCraft and uh, you'd have CS CSGO was out at this time, right? Yeah. It was probably Source. It was just probably, yeah, Counter-Strike at that time. There was really nothing 
before Halo 2 that, you know, people would, like, take work off for. And it was, like, a cultural yeah. movement where, you know, there would be pictures of people celebrating buying it in the stores. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I don't think we really see any of that anymore at all because of the movement to digital. But, I mean, Halo mm -hmm. 2 was had this huge launch. I remember it was on, like, world oh news my programs. Gosh. And, yeah. And cable cable news was showcasing Halo Two, and because no one knew how successful this would be when Halo One came out, it was the first time we were all experiencing this mm -hmm. medium together. And Halo Two was like, you know, building everything up of the hype of this game, and it it delivered, which is very rare these yeah. days. Yeah, <laughs> that's like uh, that would be a similar experience would be if cyberpunk delivered on launch you that's know? right yeah that I, would have been insanity if it did that's actually a great you know comparison yeah. like what if cyberpunk met the hype you know would, would that be as memorable in gamers minds as the launch of halo 2 yeah i would say a similar launch to halo 2 would probably be skyrim yeah um you know it's a game that you still see today and halo 2 is still seen today in you know, media, it's still found in, like, old TV shows. It's still found in, um, there's, like, still billboards out for it. People are making memorabilia. Um, there's, you know, it, Halo 2 was an iconic game. And then Halo 3 kind of stole the show when it came out. Um, just because it was, like, you know, the trilogy to put everything back together. But, right. um, I, I feel like this game was absolutely up to the birth of the video game today as we know it. So I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Um, next one is the I love bees. <laughs> I love this. Um, have you, have you ever looked into I love bees at all? I have it. it yeah. I can't believe that, you know, people spent time on this. <laughs> so I love bees was, is actually, uh, it was in a couple of my marketing classes they talked about I Love Bees, surprisingly. Interesting. In in college, like in university, they talked about I Love Bees. Uh, basically, it was an alternate reality game in ARG, and they used it to advertise for Halo 2. Like it was a, like a kind of like a scavenger hunt. And you had to find out all these clues, but then at the end, all of them are like, you know, hinting Halo 2 and stuff like that. It was really cool. Uh, I never got to experience it personally because I wasn't, you know, at that point of media consumption. <laughs> right. I would say uh, at, at that age. But um, looking back at it now, it's really cool. And it's unique because, um, you know, following i love bees that you know i don't know how to really explain it like several other places did this too like you have halo 4's arg yeah uh right before it released they had like a bunch of codes and stuff they would bring out and you had to solve them didn't gta 4 have some sort of uh atrocious scavenger hunt campaign as well and it like backfired completely i think it did are you um, trying to remember. Because they would, like, post, like, these GTA 4 stickers everywhere. Actually, hilariously enough, there's this traffic light by my house. And mm -hmm. someone slapped. It's just the uh, Roman numeral 4 of the, <laughs> cause of the, of the GTA 4 logo. Because I think yeah. that came packaged with, like, every copy. And someone mm -hmm. slapped it on this telephone pole at this busy intersection it has been there since the game came out and it's still there today i see it i see it like weekly when i drive by and it it fills my boots every time just going by it that's amazing and that's a piece of history <laughs> it is <laughs> um approximately 19 percent of all xbox players owned a copy of halo 2 all original xbox players yeah that's it goes That's to show crazy. you, this is before digital overtook everything. So, I mean, that's a lot of physical copies out in the world. You, mm -hmm. to this day, you can still buy Halo 2 for cheap. I actually just bought Halo 2 Steelbook, as we, we had that conversation about Steelbooks yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. 
I bought it for only like five dollars on eBay. I mean, it's still <laughs> dirt cheap to find Halo Two. Yep. And every I think every Xbox owner should own a physical copy of it. I mean, it's it's just a piece of Xbox history. Mm hmm. And it's still out there in circulation. You know, you can buy it at secondhand stores. You can buy it at some Walmart still. <laughs> um, and it it's a game that basically everyone had and everyone played. Um, right. You know, it's always fun to just go around and just kill all of your friends. <laughs> As, as morbid as that may sound, you know? Um, so this next one blew me away, and I had no idea, because Halo 3 actually had more. Um, so Halo 2 featured 21,090... Hear that again? 90! 90! 90. Uh, ...lines of dialogue. Most of them are actually completely random in combat. That's interesting. That's a lot of lines of dialogue. Like, I don't think some movies have that much dialogue. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like... you're 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 right. I, it's. I don't think mm. you see this much dialogue in in, in current games, just due to their scale. Yeah. Like, I, I think an obvious example is like Assassin's Creed Origins. Apparently, I I've always made fun of this, but there's like. <laughs> Only two lines of dialogues that every single person, NPC in Assassin's Creed Origins will say. Mm -hmm. And apparently, like, one of them is even a bug that they're not supposed to say at all. <laughs> and um, it's, there's a lot from Halo 2. I, I'm pretty confident you could play Halo 2 and you would hear a line of dialogue in combat that you have never heard before. I could see it. It's uh, It's like how in Skyrim... You know, like you were talking about with Assassin's Creed, how Skyrim, when you walk up to a person and all you hear is, need something? Yeah, need something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Everything's for sale. Yeah. Yep. You walk into uh, that store in right, White Run, and he goes, yeah, hey, White everything's Run. for sale. Even my sister. <laughs> Even, yeah, that's right. Even my sister. <laughs> um, so... Uh, here's a, another one here for you. So Jason Jones has a great quote that actually added lore into Halo 3. <laughs> um, so his quote is, Halo 2 is a lot like Halo 1. Only it's on it's Halo 1 on fire, going 130 miles per hour through a hospital zone, being chased by helicopters and ninjas. And the ninjas are all on fire too. <laughs> That's great. So this actually led to um, the flaming helmets. Oh, interesting. I did not know yeah. that. <laughs> That's why Bungie employees had the flaming helmets for so long. That's great. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it led to a lot of, like, other jokes in T-shirts and memes and as well, like, you know, the Halo Reach uh, headhunter skulls being on fire. Um, that's why, like, skulls being on fire kind of, like, became a thing is because of this fantastic quote here. I see. I never knew that. Yeah, he said that during one of his documentaries, I think, like one of the Vidox. So, and since then, it's just been a meme. That's amazing. Yep, and that's where it all started. <laughs> uh, this um, this next one is mine. Um, it came mm -hmm. to my mind while we were recording. So, uh, Halo Two uh, was, as we know, the first Halo game to have Xbox Live multiplayer, and. Uh, Microsoft announced that they were going to shut down all Xbox oh, Live no. servers I, yep. of OG Xbox games. And this is before MCC came out. I think this was like in 2011 or 2012. Mm -hmm. And they said this is to help the evolution of the platform. And we were a lot of people were confused and angry. They said, oh, you're taking away Halo 2. There's no way to play this anymore. Um, and there was a group of guys that stayed on. Apparently, they were like going to shut the servers at a certain date at midnight. Yes. And yes. there's these group of guys that stayed online past that and they would just search in matchmaking and they would just continuously find one another. Mm -hmm. And what they ultimately had to do was keep their Xboxes turned on. Otherwise, if they were to reboot their consoles, they could no longer connect to Xbox Live servers. Yep. So like this connection had already been established. So the connection, to my understanding, like just could not have been terminated. It was only if you turned off your xbox that's how the connection got uh wiped out and mm -hmm. um these guys continued to play halo 2 online even though the servers were gone for like a couple of weeks and uh, or was yeah, it longer it, than that 
It was about a month. So, oh, wow. um, the support from Microsoft was ended on April 16th, 2010. Um, and these 14 players continued to play until the last man dropped May 11th because he was booted. Right. By the game. And I think they said something like, you know, people would have stayed longer, but like they had a storm yeah. come through and it took out their power. Yep. Oh. Um, that was two guys actually within two hours of each other. So I have the names here. It's like D10, Cypher Sword, Sherlock One, H2O, uh, Zombie Stench, Rob 2D, Hired Noobs, Booker, A Foreign Object, uh, Dirty Cajun, Mac Daddy, Lord Odysseus, Agent Windex, <laughs> and Apache. Uh, Apache was the last person. So the uh, last man standing. Last man standing. Yep. Um, but the uh, Apache and uh, Windex actually dropped within a co- like 24 hours of each other. So. So this thought just came into my mind. They're doing the same thing for just the Halo 360 titles. Yes, and it, I feel like that's going to happen again. I think, this just came to my mind, I think we should do this for Halo Wars 1 on 360. Uh, so I actually was talking to some people, and I don't think Halo One is dro- like Halo Wars 1 is dropping. I don't either, and I've told Postums like seven times. I've yeah. said this graph indicates... That Halo Wars One is gonna stay on past this cutoff date, and he's he's like, yeah, you're right. I was like, okay, can you ask them to change it? And he says yes. And I've like, I've like, uh, reached out to him like three more times because they refuse to update it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why are you mislead? Why does Halo Wars? Why do they mislead Halo Wars players all the time, including this? You know what I mean? It, it t- even when shutting down the servers, they're they misleading them. <laughs> exactly. They can't even shut it down correctly with Halo Wars. It's <laughs> the misman. I can. This is another. This is not the appropriate place to rage about this. This is for when we yes. get to Halo Wars two or whatever. But I mean, yeah, seriously, absolutely. in the blog post, if you go to this day, we're recording July fourteenth. If you go this day. <laughs> To that 360 Sunset uh, Halo Waypoint blog post, it yep. has Halo Wars One listed there, and and another like I'm confused because it has green check marks as in not affected for all of these features, and I wanted yeah. to say if it's not affected, why did you bother to put it on the graph at all? You know, like why did why can't you why just not? said <laughs> just say oh by the way all of them except Halo Wars One is unaffected. I, it makes no sense to me, and it makes me mad because people are just going to vanish and they're not going to come back because they didn't know any better because the official source is wrong. How is that possible? It's I'll, amazing. I'll end my rant. We'll get back to Halo it's, 2. It's but. chatterful. All right, so we're going to get through our uh, our own personal opinions about Halo 2, our favorite memories, favorite mission, our cringe compilation, positives and negatives for this segment. Um, D- dare I to go first on this one, Hostie? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to start with my favorite memories. And there's a couple. Um, it's okay. kind of a favorite and a cringe moment. But I'll, I'll start with the battle on New, New Mombasa. I don't know. There's just something special about when you see the scarab kind of climb over you. And then you got to run through the building. And you feel like the clock is ticking. You have to run and grab like a rocket launcher or a shotgun or something and jump onto the scarab, you know, and take out the Covenant and blow up the scarab while you're on it. It was just so cool. Nothing had been done in gaming to give you that sort of an adrenaline rush before. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a joy to experience. I will say I'll add a cringe moment to that because I always thought you would fail the mission if you don't get on it on time, but it just stops at the end. It does, yeah. And I I was really depressed when I saw that. I thought I was actually going to fail the mission and it would just kill me. Um... Also, or you could just jump and miss and you fall to your death. <laughs> I've had that happen too. I've seen a speedrunner do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So um that's that's fair. That's I, I, that's a really crazy part of the game too, because it's like when you go back and watch that with the blur cutscenes, that's just amazing. It is. It's yeah. fa- it's fantastic. It. I think that's Halo Two has a lot of high points on the campaign, a lot of memorable points, and I think that's definitely one of them. Yeah. Um, 
uh, another favorite memory of mine is I think everyone has this is just doing custom games with your friends. And yeah. um, we we had, you know, when you're a kid, someone can say, oh, the game can do this. You're like, oh, really? And let's try it. And then so what happened was, is we were playing like four player split screen on or maybe mm-hmm. it was just two player split screen on Halo 2. And someone came up and said, you know, we were playing on um, lockout and they said, you know, if you move the fusion coils up to the center and then you shoot at it with turrets and grenades and all these other things, the map will blow up. And we're like, <laughs> really? And so I'm not kidding you. We spent like three and a half hours pushing fusion coils and we had like uh, like oh infinite grenades God. and we were just tossed and stuff. Everybody had rocket launchers. <laughs> and uh, obviously nothing happened. And you got uh, bamboozled. We did. So th- yeah. th- I mean, that was a that's a fond memory, but it's also cringe. That's very cringe. Not what gonna a, lie. What about you? What's your That's, favorite memory? Gosh, uh, I would say my favorite memory is probably being able to go and watch tournaments on live TV. Oh, like on G four or something? Yeah, yeah. I forgot what it was. It was either like G four or ESPN. Because I know you can watch Halo three on ESPN, but um, I I don't remember exactly what platform it was on, but. The fact that I could turn on my TV and turn to a channel on cable, because we don't use cable anymore, you know. That's, right. That's too old school now. But Only boomers use cable. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, and you could go and watch these tournaments. I thought that was, like, groundbreaking for video games, you know? That I would not have ever imagined in my lifetime being able to see esports where they are now too you know right, right like how they're just as hyped as real sports i would say esports are their own league of sports at this point like, hey, halo rocket has... league uh, like rocket league was a sideshow at the olympics was it really you know mm-hmm yeah during the olympics there was a tournament going on right outside and it was a sideshow yeah, so um, I I would say seeing that was definitely my favorite memory of Halo Two. I mean that's totally fair. I I think Halo has solidified so many aspects of gaming that I think we just assume is normal now. Like yeah, esports is really become more me it's it's pretty mainstream i'd say right now it's it's pretty casual i think for people to be involved in some form of of esports doesn't necessarily have to be like world championship tournaments but Mm -hmm. i I think twitch has helped a lot with that oh my gosh yeah community run tournaments all these sorts of things everyone's involved in some sort of competitive scene of their favorite Mm -hmm. game i i feel like on some level i would say the pandemic even helped it you know, Probably. people are at home always and they need something to do. Why not just pick up a video game because you've never played one before, you know, right. or like um, that sounds interesting. I want to play this game. And then you have all this extra time if you're unemployed. And it's like, oh, just go pro, you know, or s- something crazy like that. It's awesome, honestly, that a lot more people have picked up gaming during the pandemic and um, seeing that now versus the stigma behind playing video games back in the early 2000s, you know? Yeah, I, it's, I actually get comments on a regular basis of people that are saying that... Um, cause I made a few MCC videos here and there, and people yeah. have said that they are playing Halo for the very first time because yeah. Master Chief Collection is available on Steam. It's It's a platform that has unlocked a new audience to discover this for the very first time. And I think it's great that a game that is really se- almost 17 years old um, and it got remastered, uh, people are discovering for the first time and falling in love with this franchise. And it's, it's great. Yeah, it is. Um, I would say, you know, people f- in Halo is being very, very inclusive now too, with like infinite. Yeah. Um, and even MCC, where MCC is now cross-play, um, I would say that more people could play Halo now than ever. Now, necessarily, not 
the, you know, that's not coinciding with the population of the game, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would say it's the most inclusive Halo has ever been from being a exclusive title until um, MCC came. To, I would say Halo. No. Yeah. Halo five was the first game to come to PC uh, since Halo two. H- Halo five has never been on uh, natively on PC. But it still has Forge, is what I'm saying. Oh, you can do Forge. Yes. I see what yeah, you're you saying. can do Forge in custom games. Right. So, mm-hmm. which I think is so stupid. Like you already have the game running. Just yeah, I'm gonna in. throw that in the Halo Five rant for later. That uh, I, for those of you watching, Halo Five is gonna be an absolute rant. It and is. You we, should be excited for it. We are gonna <laughs> slaughter halo 5 i think with the population though being low in mcc i think part of it is is that people bought this it didn't work and then they waited four and a half years Mm -hmm. and it still didn't work and they left and even though they did the right thing and they fixed it i think it's just too late yep but um frank o'connor did a 1000 days later interview for mcc oh dear how did that go uh it was not good i watched it it was only like 10 or so minutes long um but it's definitely worth the watch because you see him just dying inside the entire the entire interview so i i remember when ed and i first met we we're talking about mcc because we we wanted to make mcc stuff to complement halo wars 1 and, and halo wars 2 back in the day but we could never connect for years we could never connect until really 2018 2019 when they fixed it mm-hmm. and i the running joke that I had was it's incredible that they have four games or five games uh, that are on the 360 on newer hardware and they can't get it to work. <laughs> I mean, there was what, like seven or eight game engines. Yeah. So, I mean, it is from a scope perspective. It's one of the most bold. Um, can you imagine being in the meeting room to present this where you're like, <laughs> We want to bring every Halo game ever that has Master Chief in it to this new hardware, and we're going to improve the both the resolution and the frame rate, include all the DLC maps, have all of the multiplayer, and then have a singular user interface for all of this. Because you will see oh compilations of other games from other developers, like a good example is Uncharted Collection or mm-hmm. Ezio Collection. And they have boosted resolutions and frame rates in all of its DLC. But what they don't have is a unified UI. You'll just like tap, I want to yeah. play Uncharted 2, and it will launch Uncharted 2. Yeah, it's kind of like just a hub. Right, exactly. You know? and, and that's how like Ezio Collection works. And so many other compilations of these games will work. And Halo MCC does not do that. You can just float between, and the music will change, mm-hmm. and the background will change. And yeah, it's. Yeah, it's. It, I would say what they have now, which is in, I was, I'm blown away by season seven, how far they've come um, with how much they've added, how much they've improved, how much they've fixed. It is the original CE again. That is insanity to me. Like the original combat evolved anniversary. Yeah. I mean, it only took them seven years to do it. (laughs) <laughs> so the, I, 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 I say this in the perspective of, of Halo 2 because Halo 2 anniversary is, I, in my opinion, so well done. It is the yes. definitive way to experience ha- any Halo campaign is through MCC. That's mm-hmm. why I bring it up for the sake of this show. And I really like how they stuck to similar art styles for anniversary going into Infinite. Yeah. Uh, they look very similar. They do. A lot of people said, before we knew what Infinite was like, they're like, well, what will it look like? And some people said, well, why don't you look at what they have done, not including Halo Mm -hmm. 4 and Halo 5, and that was Halo Wars 2 and Halo 2. And actually, you kind of merge those two art styles, and you get something that looks very similar to Halo Infinite. Yep. I I really like that they're sticking with the Halo Wars 2 um, vibe. Yes. I, I will say the Phantom looked cringe in the first video. So it did. I'm really glad they fixed that. But yeah. Um, uh, going forward into Infinite, I feel like they're going to learn. They're learning a lot from their mistakes. Looking back at Halo 2 Anniversary, looking back at MCC. So hopefully these bad things that we are talking about coming up here um, will be fixed or. 
they will have learned from it at least, and they don't do it as bad next time. So, I um, it's it's a bold prediction on my part, but I think <laughs> that Microsoft and their studios have learned so many lessons from the wrongs of the Xbox One generation. You know, mm-hmm. they ended strong with the One X, and One X is one of my favorite consoles ever. But they took it to a whole nother level with the Series S and the Series X and Game Pass and cross-platform play and yeah. play anywhere. I mean, there's so many features, backwards compatibility, FPS boost, the list goes on and on. I really, it's a bold prediction, but we'll see how mm-hmm. what time tells of this prediction. But I think that the Series lineup generation of S and X are going to be the golden years of Xbox again, like how it was in the 360 days. Yeah. I can see that. 360, though, for its time, had incredible, like, hardware. So, um, you know, looking back on it now, it still has comparable hardware to some PCs you see today. <laughs> so The 360, uh, I think... It had, a, it, it's had like, a tri-core, like, 3.2 gigabyte, I think, um, processor. Yeah, it, it had 512 megs of RAM. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just... That system the RAM was is obviously a little low, but <laughs> the system was just so good. It had it was great hardware, complemented by great software, both on games and the user interface. I thought I actually really liked Connect. I thought that was a great pivot. I think their one misstep was Red Ring of Death and going all in, or maybe mm-hmm. not going all in on HD DVD. Having it be a separate add on is what killed that format. Yeah, and. and it's, it's, it's I uh, I felt it was yeah, and it could you know backwards compatible, so it could play Halo two. <laughs> That's right, you can play <laughs> you can play Halo two online on your three hundred and sixty. Yep, which is nice. So, uh, what was your favorite mission? It was, I think everyone oh has has this as their favorite mission. It's Delta <laughs> Halo. Saw, yep, Delta Halo, definitely. Um, that was a cool mission, especially on anniversary, but. Um, watching it now, like watching people speed run through that mission in like three minutes, um, like, you know, probably five minutes more realistically, but, uh, it had its problems, but it was definitely an iconic mission. You know, you, you're falling back on and you're on a halo again. You're like, oh my gosh, guys, it's halo all over again. But then you're there with new people with actual, you know, friends. You're not there alone anymore with just Cortana. You have Cortana and you have Miranda keys and you have Johnson with you and you have a bunch of ODSTs that don't really matter and all going to die. And you have a tank. Yes. In a, in a tank. (laughs) So it's, you ever seen that, that, uh, famous tweet where it's like guy at second rodeo says this ain't my first rodeo. Yes. It's that's kind of like the feeling you get when you're on Delta halo. Yeah. Cause you know, it's like um, experiencing the flood for the first time and then going back and playing co-op and playing co-op when they've never seen the flood before. Right. And you have. It's kind of the same feeling. Delta Halo has a fantastic remastered cutscene in Anniversary. Oh I'm my gosh, yes. Fabulous. Um, I think from start to end, it's it's a joy to play in... I love mm-hmm. that even though you're landing on another Halo ring, the environment is slightly different. It's not wide and open. It's kind of mm-hmm. narrow and windy. And it has kind of like this Mayan Aztec look to some of the structures. Mm-hmm. And it begs for you to explore different paths. And, you know, it has you getting on and off your tank to toggle different things. I, I don't know. I... Delta Halo is great. It, it's it's a great mission. I I think that there's actually a playlist, um, in Halo Two that or in in MCC I should say that features like some of the highest moments in all the campaigns. And Delta Halo is in one of those. Uh, yes, it has like uh, I think it has like uh, it's either the Ark or the Covenant from Halo Three. It has Delta Halo from uh, Halo Two. It has Halo from Halo One. Um. And then something else from Halo 4. I think it has uh, one the mission that plays the soundtrack for 117. I think it's Midnight or something like that. But um, yeah, that's a, 
that playlist is probably some of the best uh, campaign missions. And when we get into Halo 3, I'll talk about some beauty with what they did for some of those games. Like, But um, I, I think Delta Halo was just a unique experience, I would say. Something that you come in and you're like, like you were saying, not your first rodeo. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it's it's just great. I there's really nothing else for me to say about it. Is that it, it is it, absolutely excellent. Yes. Excellent. It's, it's one of the many high points in the campaign that gives you a adrenaline rush. Um, like battling on New Mombasa mm-hmm. is one of those moments. Delta Halo is another. So yeah, go play Delta Halo. Delta Halo, and you listen to the Delta Halo Suite. Oh, <laughs> oh. the music! And... So good. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, um, so I see your cringe moment, um, down at the bottom for this next part, and I believe we already talked about it a little bit. So, uh, how you were saying, uh, thinking the maps were destructible. Yeah, absolute yeah. cringe. Uh, <laughs> It's probably just best we move on from that one. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, What's yours? <laughs> My cringe moment is uh, legendary with jackal snipers. Um, that says it all. You can look up all the memes on YouTube about it if you don't know what I'm talking about. And um, if you do know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry for your loss of time and patience and sanity. So. You know, argu- can... ar- arguably. <laughs> That is probably the worst moment in the campaign. Yep. I you know, they're in Delta Halo, they're on New Mombasa, they're um they're in the mission after New Mombasa. Um they're they're terrible. And they're terrible. Terrible. Mm-hmm. Terrible. And they they really ruined the legendary experience. I think they are what make Halo 2 the hardest legendary campaign. So Yeah, it, it I agree with that. It makes it so difficult to play anything. Because you turn a corner and there's a Jackal Sniper. You turn another corner and, you know, there's two Jackal Snipers. You kill the first one, but the second one snipes you immediately. And then you have to restart the whole, like, section and, and so on and so on. Um, it's awful. I, I, it's oh. for those of you who are unaware, the jackal snipers can pretty much one bomb you, and they have like an aim bot, and they will always like snipe you right yeah. in between the eyeballs. And there was, it, it's frustrating. It is, it's some, there's even montages on YouTube where someone, if you're playing a co op, your teammate will spawn like in the alley, and like within milliseconds, they're sniped. Yep. Uh, I remember specifically watching a YouTube video where a guy walks up to a jackal and melees it, and it doesn't kill the jackal, and it 180s and no scopes <laughs> him in the face. So <laughs> that's great. Like he's, be- he's behind it too, and the the assassination doesn't connect and doesn't kill it, and it alerts the the jackal. So oh, just geez. to to tell you how bad they are, um, it's quite cringe. Uh, so I guess we're getting into positives and negatives. Yes. And it's a very uh, unbalanced list, skewed heavily into the positives. Yeah, S- very skewed heavily into the positives. Um, do we just want to get dislikes out of the way so we can talk about all the positives? Yeah, or... let's, let's end okay. on a good note with this one. Yes. Uh, so I'll start with mine. Why is the resolution 480p on this game? <laughs> Do you, Why is it, is it so bad until you get to Halo 2 Anniversary? Do you think it's because the OG Xbox itself yeah. only shipped with composite cables and not component cables? So maybe maybe the machine is incapable of displaying in, in HD. That could be. like, it, Granted, it is in the time where you would still have to pay several hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for an HD TV when those were first starting to become popular. But I would say that it is unruly that you can play a game on the 360 and not have 720p. Right. Yeah, I I think, I actually think that Halo 2 only supports 4x3 
on Xbox. Yes, I, I may be wrong does. on that. Um, on the on the original Xbox, that was. It right. wasn't until Halo Two. See, there's different versions of Halo Two, and this is where the conversation can get a little confusing. Is like, yeah, which Halo Two are you talking about? There's really three of them. There's uh, mm -hmm. OG Xbox, there's Vista, and there's MCC. And I think MCC Halo Two is an extension of Vista because Vista added uh, widescreen support, which is sixteen mm -hmm. by nine, which is a standard. We we now know it today to be a standard. Yeah, TV. it's now the standard. Um, but yeah, no the the resolution back then. Now you can play Halo, uh, Halo Two on MCC at like four K. Yes. When you look at the difference between that and 480p, your radar is probably as big as the old resolution was for pixels. <laughs> that's it's right. Disgust. It is absolutely horrendous. That's that's um, why there's this. It's kind of a conversation of graphics does not equal resolution. You yes. know, like a, a, a game that's really, really old that scale correctly to a higher resolution can look beautiful. Yes. In that case, Halo 2. Um, so, my next one is uh, the vehicles are very clunky compared to Halo 1. Mm. Um, by that, I mean if, you know, you're driving a Warthog, it feels like you're kind of floating. Um, unlike in Halo 2 where, I mean, in Halo 2, you did float a little bit. But the vehicles felt like they reacted a bit better i would say i don't know the halo 2 vehicles felt like sandpaper compared to all of the others yeah um, they're they're very weak vehicles um ghosts i think are incredibly weak mm -hmm. but uh halo 1 had invincible vehicles yes so and this is really their first step into this area of the game so mm -hmm. they couldn't knock it out of the park i guess on the first shot yeah and as well when you're driving like some of the warthogs especially on the bridge this is noticeable in new Mombasa, the vehicles like bump up and down yeah yeah they do like yeah yeah they bump up and down when you're driving them like they're shaking like this vehicle has a bad transmission mount or something like that and just shakes up and down constantly it, it was um, it was cool that parts of the vehicle would like kind of fall off. Yes, but and, but I, I agree the vehicles are. They, I feel like they don't have a lot of hit points. You know they're, yeah, they're almost like toys. Mm hmm. And you see that again with like Halo Five ones too. So yeah, Halo Five's horrible. So the final one that I had was that there was no assault rifle. They only had the SMG. So you're now, you're actually a fan of the assault rifle. I would say so. Yeah, I do not like the Halo One assault rifle. Uh, it just fe seems like a bullet hose that does no damage. Mm -hmm. But the Halo Three, Halo Four, and the Halo Two Anniversary assault rifles were probably my favorite ones. Uh, Halo Three, not so much because it was just kind of like a pea shooter. But uh, the Halo 2 Anniversary Assault Rifle is definitely my favorite. And it's actually, in most cases, considered a power weapon. Because of its time to kill versus the battle rifle. Right. I I agree with you. I I actually I actually do not like the Assault Rifle at all. The only game I think really? I really connected with the Assault Rifle is either Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer mm -hmm. and Halo 4 Multiplayer. Yeah. And because in Halo 4 multiplayer, there were so many times where someone would, like, be running towards you with a battle rifle and they're like, oh, I'm going to, like, you know, four shot this kid or whatever the case may be. I just pull an assault rifle and my time to kill is faster or shorter, yeah. whatever the terminology is, and I eliminate you first. And I remember a lot of people were confused about that. But I, I, in my mind, that's how it should be. With yes. Close the... range, assault rifle should be battle rifle. Yep. In... For the most part, it does, which is nice, except for in small cases in Halo 1 and 3. Um, or I should compare in Halo 1 to the Magnum. So, right. you know, you could get, you could like basically four shot people with it. But, um, so that's my dislikes. Very small list. Um, I, you know, at the time, I had a very newfound respect for the game. And, um, coming back to it even, 
I love it even more. Um, the, like, I liked it so much that uh, Breaking the Clutch, we actually did a 4v4 tournament during the pandemic. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. We, we played in the, uh, the MCC Pro Series for a little bit. So that was fun. I loved it. I don't like how there's only three maps in multiplayer, though. <laughs> for uh, for anniversary, for, yeah, for anniversary ranked, all of the rest are just uh, forge maps. There's right. only three real maps. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What do uh, you not like about Halo Two? I, I, there's not a lot, I actually. I actually had to really dig deep to find things I didn't like. <laughs> and you got to okay. take this first point within the perspective of those who played the game when it came out. And mm -hmm. that's the cliffhanger ending. The game was supposed to have a different ending than what we got, but due to timing constraints and development, they had to cut a section of the game out. Uh, I've mm -hmm. heard anywhere between a fourth to a third of the game was completely cut for a campaign. Um, so with the cliffhanger ending, I'm sure I can spoil it by now. It's been 17 years. <laughs> you're, you're jumping out of a ship to land back on Earth. And you just, he says, sir, finishing this fight. And like, that's it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, hey, that's iconic. Though. It's, it's totally iconic. It's a, you know, it's one of the most popular lines in all of Halo. It's kind of like you're sitting, you're like, oh no, like, you know, what happens next? I got to wait three more years to see what happens. <laughs> and if, nope. if you're playing Master Chief Collection today for the first time, it's not that big of a deal because the first mission of Halo 3 is really the last mission of Halo 2. It picks up right where it left off, which mm -hmm. is what I love about the beginning of Halo 3's campaign. Um, yeah. It just, it just is all gas at the beginning of Halo 3. So, you know, if, for those of you that had to wait for the cliffhanger ending at Halo 2, I I feel you. I think that the, that dislike is really invalid today, but in 2004 when the game came out, I think it's a valid point. Um. So I got something to add here. Imagine... If they moved that cliffhanger, we would see a very different Halo 3 today. Yeah. I feel like we wouldn't have as good of a Halo 3 if they moved that cliffhanger. Um, the reason I say that is because imagine, you know, they get to Earth and then Chief lands on the planet. Like they do a mission inside the Dreadnought or something and you have to jump out of the Dreadnought and then hit Earth. Imagine if they left it off at Sierra 117. Like you, re like you rescue Johnson, and like you're going into the. Um, into no, no, the... no, no, no. Like when he hits the ground. Oh, 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 oh! I see. <laughs> so just like sixty so, seconds longer in that cutscene. Yeah, but they add like a mission inside the dreadnought during that time. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, like that'd that... be kind of cool, you know. And then you have to wait for three years to know if Master Chief's actually alive or not. And then the advertising campaign would have been completely different. That's right. That's right. It's like, where's the chief? You know, that would be it would be more along that line. I guess that's but, a good counterpoint, because so much of the marketing for Halo 3 was finishing the fight. Mm -hmm. They rode that catchphrase from the cliffhanger in Halo 2. Yeah, so that, that's I, a great point. I, I think you've just completely destroyed my argument there. <laughs> yeah, so, it, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Like, when you saw that cliffhanger back in 2004, you'd think this is the worst thing ever. Oh, my gosh, why would they do this and leave me waiting for three years? Halo 5. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, it's crazy that... That cliffhanger is what made the trilogy just so good. Yeah. Um, I I think it did, at least. Some people hated it, especially people who experienced it for three years. Um, for me, it was just a blink of an eye. So. Right. Well, I say that because I forgot most of those times. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was still three years for me, but uh, it was a quite faster three years than for people who are older. So. My, my my next one is that the flood got a little nerfed in Halo 2. Yeah. We we didn't did. It's hard to put this into words, but the flood gets less and less scary as the trilogy goes on to the point in Halo 3 where they're kind of almost an annoyance where it's like just get out of my way. Yeah. Um 
And, and I think in Halo 2, it's kind of like in this odd place where they're not as scary as they were in, in Halo 1, but they're not as easy targets that they are in Halo 3. It's kind of like in the middle. The Flood can certainly still overwhelm you in Halo 2, but there was a lot to balance in Halo 2. You had chief missions, you had Arby missions, you had the story of the heretics, the introduced grave mind. We still had, you know, Guilty Spark running around. We had Tartarus, we had the prophets, all of the lore they introduced with the Covenant, and then they had to put in the Flood on top of all of this stuff. Yeah. So I think something had to give, and I think in Halo 2 it was the Flood. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I think it still adds weight to the story, but it's not as strong as they were in Halo 1. Uh, I have a good comparison for that. So, like, in Halo 1, they are literally the reason you're destroying the Halo ring. Right. They are the end-all, be-all, the Flood is here, we have to run, we have to hide, we have to destroy them. Um, they are the end of times in, you know, in, in a way for Halo 1. Halo 2, there's all this super political stuff happening and crazy stuff happening in the flood shows up. You know, they're, they're it's still there. They're still in the background, but they're on the back burner, uh, which I completely agree with you on. You know, they show up at the end and I like how they showed up at the end of the game mostly because it's like, Oh yeah, by the way, did you forget the flood exists? Because That's right. They are. <laughs> That's right. Let's add another problem onto your plate. Exactly. And they slowly take over the ship like they slowly did with the Halo ring, you know. Some great uh parallels there, I would say, but they added more stuff onto it to make it more tolerable, so to say, you know. It was basically similar progression through the story, except for you had more going on in the story this time. You weren't just focusing on killing the Flood. You were focusing on killing Tartarus or, um, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff you're doing at the exact same time, like you were saying. Yeah. Um, but I still feel like the Flood being on that back burner is definitely influential to the game, but not to gameplay. Absolutely not to gameplay. Right. They, they were basically non-existent. I completely agree with you. It, it, and, you know, it, it's fair that they're in there, but they're not the main antagonist, per se, for yeah. most of the campaign. Um, <laughs> my, my last, or really minor things, uh, yeah. I think Legendary sucks. I mean, it's... <laughs> Legendary is like an Halo 2... The worst pain and suffering you can inflict on yourself, I think, in any shooter. I mean, it it's to the point where, like, I don't even recommend people play Legendary on Halo 2. There are people yeah. that inflict pain on themselves to do even Legendary All Schools on for some of the achievements in yeah. MCC. I don't know how people do that. Uh, the difficulty scaling especially when you add co-op into it is impossible in my opinion i oh my gosh co-op makes it so hard co-op is really hard in halo 2 um i think it's i think the worst offenders for legendary in in halo games is halo reach and halo 2 yep and those are the two i i really just do not recommend people play legendary on those games i think halo th it's so funny because halo 3 legendary is almost too easy i would uh, say halo force is even easier yeah. Halo 4 Legendary just feels like normal. Yeah. Uh, in, in Halo 2. <laughs> That's right. Um, as for, like, uh, just to explain a little bit for co-op for everyone listening. Um, so co-op, if one of you die, you go back to checkpoint. It's not if two of you, like if both of you know, like in Halo 1, how it's the respawn system. Halo 3, it's the respawn system where if you die, you can run away and your teammate will spawn you. No. If one of you dies, the game restarts. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a very unforgiving system. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why it's like that, because Halo 1 didn't have that problem, and they corrected it in Halo 3, but... I don't know why. They did a lot of experimental stuff in Halo 2, like getting rid of the AR, adding that in, um, you know, adding in the Brutes. They did a lot of crazy stuff between Halo 2 and Halo 3. Like, well, I should say, you know, between Halo 1 and Halo 3. Yeah. It, it, you know, to, to sum up my list, 
things I don't really know if they need elaborating on, but like the rocket locking on was horrible. The the ghost would explode twice. Um, yeah, it, you had to listen for it, and the AI was completely stupid on the UNSC side in Halo Two. <laughs> Like there was, there's videos where people yeah. would like get in the um, gunner's seat on the warthog as Master Chief, and the AI is like, "Oh, I'll drive," and they just drive you off a cliff. Yep, they just. Oh my gosh, it's like uh, I had this happen once where I got a marine in the side of my warthog, and he had a rocket launcher and just shoots it straight down as soon as he gets in. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Um, so let's uh, get into the nice, fantastic stuff about Halo 2, at least that we personally liked. Now, I will say this is a very condensed list compared to how much we could actually add here. So, right. Add your stuff in the comments below what you think of Halo 2, what you like about it. Do it. Please. Yes. Um, campaign was amazing. I see we both have that. Yep. Uh, you, you elaborated, but, um, 14 missions. Playable missions. That's crazy. That's a lot. Uh, Halo 1 had 10. And Halo 3, either I think it was 9 or 10. I don't remember. But 14 distinct missions is crazy nice. And from what I remember, listening to some of the uh, Infinite like news they've been releasing, Infinite may have more. Like, they, they said it could possibly have up to, like, 16 or something like that. Which is crazy to me that they're going to have a game with a campaign bigger than Halo 2's campaign. It was so unique. You know, you're going through, like, the Aztecs place on the Halo ring. You're going through New Mombasa. You're going through, um, like, the, the wintry areas of the Halo ring during Quarantine Zone. You're going through High Charity... Um, you're going, do you go back through a covenant ship? I forgot. I think when you're leaving high charity. Okay. Um, and then you but, go through new Cairo station as well. Yes. Oh, and then on top of that, you go through the place right next to, uh, the original halo ring. Um, the, the mining facility, like, yep. come on. That's so many unique places where halo one is just halo ring. You know, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and, uh, you like you had unique places on the Halo ring, but it's just Halo ring. Um, and Halo Halo Three followed up with this as well, like this uniqueness to all of the the scenery, which I think is something Halo extremely excels at and does well with their campaigns of having unique scenery in sandboxes and skyboxes. Um, that just make it feel like a immersive game they they really tried to dial up the differentiating identifiers in in these maps mm -hmm. both both campaign and in multiplayer you know like you you knew that you were physically in a different location on these missions they made the environments distinct and i love yeah. that um I would say, like like you were saying in your positives, that Johnson became a main character, which was, oh my gosh. He is such a good, um, such a good character, and I'm really sad to see him go at the end of Halo 3. Spoilers. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say it's, uh, it's definitely a campaign worth playing, um. You know, it's not like some sort of Call of Duty campaign where you get this this cool, like, Michael Bay stuff going on. It's a true and true campaign where there is stuff going on, plot twists, uh, mystery, and there's a whole lot to learn and a whole lot to do. It has weight to it, and I, I like yes. that a lot. Um, I, I, I think one of the ones that stand out the most for me is... I think the multiplayer of Halo 2 slaps. I mean, absolutely slaps. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, I prefer Halo 2 multiplayer over Halo 3. Not to say Halo 3 multiplayer is bad. I just think it's better. Uh, I think Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer is a gem, a hidden gem in MCC. A lot of people didn't know that they remastered the multiplayer mm -hmm. in, in MCC. Um, I just 
I absolutely love the multiplayer of Halo 2. Like, you, you have a, a point here that there's so many maps in the multiplayer, and most of them are fantastic. There are some remasters from Halo 1 mm -hmm. in there. It had map packs. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, different environments, big big maps, small maps, medium size, classics like Lockout. Um, I mean, there's... It's, I can't... There's really nothing wrong with Halo 2's multiplayer, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, in... On top of that, uh, one of the other things I was saying about multiplayer is that there's button combos, you know, like the BXR or YY or, uh, you know, YY to make your shotgun shoot faster or your gun shoot faster or there there was a high skill ceiling in multiplayer and a very uh, low skill floor. Anyone could get into Halo multiplayer, but it took a lot to be a pro at it. You know, it took literal hours of sitting in custom games to figure out all these button combos and there's a basically infinite amount of them you know roll the credits halo infinite that's right but, that's right <laughs> <laughs> um and i would say it's probably my favorite going down in i actually you know halo 3 has a special place in my heart but um as for multiplayer online matchmaking i would say it's probably the best um, it was very balanced when it first came out. I would say that not every weapon has its place in the sandbox. Um, some weapons were nerfed really badly, but the BR play and uh, just how the maps flowed is just so different from any other game you'll play. Like, it felt like a classic retro game from the 90s early, you know, uh, e earlier even. Um, but it, but it played like a game you would see even today, like past 2010. Yeah. Um, but... I agree. I, I think someone who's, um, uh, I don't know what the word is. Someone who plays multiplayer currently today in current games, like Call of Duty, Halo, Warzone, whatever the case may be, they could pick up Halo 2, mm -hmm. classic Halo 2 multiplayer, and probably just instantly, you know, start enjoying the sandbox that it offers. Yeah. Because I think that multiplayer was designed so well, and it was so ahead of its time. There was nothing in the market in gaming, period, that could match Halo 2's experience online. Um, from yeah. gun gunplay to maps to the experience of flowing in in and out of matches, um, I, you have a point up there about clans. I mean, yeah. there's just nothing like it. And Halo Two set the standard for this. And really, we a lot of games today have Halo Two to think of, like how lobbies are designed. Yes. You know? Oh my gosh, the lobby system was groundbreaking for the time and you see halo 3 replicate it you see halo reach replicate it uh you don't really see it so much in halo 4 and 5 but uh the way the pre-lobby system worked you can see call of duty copying it even um with how you launch into a game how there was the pre-game lobby how uh you have the post-game lobby and it was this unique place you know before the game the game started before the match started you know <laughs> Yeah. Um it was fantastic. Um I, I, I think I'll, I'll probably summarize my all my positives with the, with this last point um to wrap things up is I think Halo 2 anniversary is the best looking Halo campaign ever. I think um there's See more that. flashy campaigns in the Halo universe. Mm -hmm. I think Halo 4 in particular tries to be flashy. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, but I think in what is subtle yet beautiful in terms of graphics is Halo 2 Anniversary, the way that they have the color array of Halo 2, the way explosions work in Halo 2 Anniversary. Um, flipping back and forth between classic and anniversary modes, it, you are really like, wow, this is incredible because you're you're yeah. effectively going up two generations you're going from OG Xbox to Xbox One, whereas with Halo 1 Anniversary, you're just going up one generation. Yep. And, oh my gosh, did they, they blew away this anniversary compared to the first one they did. 
Yeah. Um, they they learned it, their lessons with with Halo One Anniversary, in my opinion. Yeah. And moving from that, I would say, oh my gosh, the soundtrack difference. Yes. Because I see you have music down there. I have to talk about this. Like, you could buy the Halo Two Anniversary soundtrack and not play the game and still love it. <laughs> That's um, right. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's like the picture, uh, the meme where the guy's playing the piano and it's on fire. Uh, yeah. it, it, <laughs> that is how I feel. Speaking of, uh, like, that, you know, the uh, the game having a good soundtrack, Halo 2's soundtrack, uh, blow me away just got its platinum certification this year uh, wow. in January which means that it has sold over 1 million US copies that's um, great yep um uh, you know in the it's weird because you would think Breaking Benjamin they got fa their fame is from Halo 2 <laughs> that's right <laughs> they were they were not much of a, a band until they premiered in Halo 2 soundtrack and then from there they were popular everywhere um but they you know their other soundtracks like Ashes of Eden and Dear Agony got their gold certifications but they're not even close to this specific song that was played in in Halo 2 at at the end that yeah the end of Grave Mind um that was an incredible mission by the way but the soundtrack is just so unique and Steve Vai uh was the person playing the guitar on those like incredible guitar riffs so it, it's just you, you know <laughs> yeah it, it's so good it's uh, you know, getting a legendary guitarist to play for your video game soundtrack is unheard of until Halo. So I, I but, really don't think there's anything left for me to say about yeah. Halo 2. Uh, uh, I mean, I could go on for hours about this game, but as for the main points of like what we liked, what our favorite missions were, um, there's a lot to be unpacked for Halo 2 and Halo 2 Anniversary. Um, if you haven't played it, go out and play it. It's incredible. Um, it's almost a, I would say like a philosophy eye-opening experience playing Halo 2 for the first time. You realize what you see in games today, they can't even replicate some of the stuff that happens back then. I mean, so. you, you really do not need to be a Halo fan or an Xbox fan or even a fps shooter fan mm -hmm. um to enjoy halo 2 i know that a lot of people have a hard time getting into halo because of halo 1's age and yeah mechanics and halo 2 does a great job of filling you in on that story in the first couple of cutscenes. so oh my gosh yeah the game it... is it's, it's available in game pass um it's on it which what's also kind of incredible is it's available on almost every platform you can play it on uh, Xbox, uh, for Halo 2 Anniversary specifically, it's Xbox One, the series consoles, uh, Steam, Windows Store, and now you can play it on your phone with xCloud. So, I mean, it's yep. it's literally everywhere. You can play Halo Every 2 everywhere. Go, yeah. play, go play Halo 2. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If this is your first episode in this series, we're going to be doing one episode dedicated to each Halo game, just like this one. There's going to be a playlist of all of the episodes in this series. Hope you check that out. This should be about 10 episodes long. We'll be back next time with Halo 3. That's next in this chrono. Well, I guess no. We'll be back with ODST. ODST's up next. ODST is up next. We'll be back next time with ODST. Uh, Hosty, thank you so much for joining me today. Were it so easy. Were it so easy. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have we'll a good see you.